Welcome to Nerd vs. World episode 28, Weekend at Nerdies 2. Mm-hmm. And yes, they made a sequel to Weekend at Bernie's, so it's a full legit name. Mm-hmm. I'm Brendan. I'm Spindles. And I'm Amy. And I'm Emma. Okay, on this week's show, we have our Sci Fi Weekender Roundup. We have a slight bit of Rage at WrestleMania 30. <laughs> there is Game of Thrones news, Winter Soldier, and Walking Dead Finale recap. As well as a host of events we've got to plug for you guys as well. Yeah, there's a ton going on, but we'll get to that a bit later on. So straight in with it then, chaps. Straight in. Sci-Fi Weekend of Five. How did we all find it this year? I thought it was brilliant. I thought, and I tweeted uh, as such, I thought it was a much friendlier vibe than it was last year. Um, it was easier to get around, even in, even in the Predator area. It's easier just to go and see what you have to buy. And yeah, I think uh, for, for me it certainly in. felt a lot more chilled this yeah. part, apart from the fact that I was suffering from blind panic from the moment I arrived yeah. <laughs> until some point yeah. in Saturday afternoon but it felt a bit more chilled <laughs> it was definitely a lot more relaxed um, yeah. there was a lot of people smiling being happy um, there seemed to be a lot less antagonism at night sort of like and I noticed last year that if you slightly knocked into somebody you get like a bit of aggression in the evenings and none of that happened this time and everyone was really cooperative and lovely yeah. Yeah, it was really cool. So yeah, from from Thursday night onwards, um, where did we get up to when we got there? Alcohol. There was no, a beer. Ah, no, I text Swindles ah, at, yeah. seven, at seven o'clock. I went, dude, it's seven, and I'm, I'm sober. Still, he, <laughs> was, he was still sober. It was rather impressive. Yeah, and not getting his ass handed to him by my daughter at Knots and Crosses this yeah, year. No. <laughs> <laughs> Although there was a lightsaber fight on the Sunday when we were packing up, which she won. But only, only because uh, one of the guys I was showing a chalet with opened the window and grabbed my hoodie and pulled me back into <laughs> the window so I couldn't leave. External <laughs> interference. Yeah, for sure. I'm going to blame that. <laughs> yeah, so there was the Thursday night quiz. I think what, what were the options? There was Match and Barrel, there was the shorts programme in the screening room, and the then. The crap film amnesty. The crap film amnesty, and the quiz was on in the spaceport yeah. with a DJ set afterwards. Uh, I think we all opted for quiz and. DJ set, didn't we? I went to Match and Barrel. Yeah, how was that though on Thursday? Because we didn't go down there. It was empty. Really? Okay. Yeah. It was it was pretty empty. No, I walked past it on the way through and just went, no, I'll just go up to the main drag and see what's happening, really. Well, we found table 42 that was empty, so we just sat there. <laughs> like, I Instagrammed it, I was just like, what other table number could there be for a geeky drink? Yeah. Look, and we, all, we all sat down, it fit, it fit everybody in the group perfectly, it was an eight seat table. We all sat down and they came across and oh, sorry guys, this, this area is closed, you're going to have to move. It's like, no! <laughs> that's, why, that's why you need your somebody else's problem field, sir. Yeah. <laughs> this is perfect, this is like the best number Can we ever. not take the table with us? <laughs> so yeah, we, we left, got a few drinks in and then just kind of readied ourselves for the weekend really. Yeah, well, so we, we all ended up in, in the spaceport and yeah, oh, had a couple of beers. First. Yes, yeah, we had pizza and everything first before we went to help. Settled and went to Spaceport. And then, yeah, bumped into the Rankins in the Spaceport and much beer ensued. Indeed. And uh, <laughs> people arrived. Met a few other people, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it was, it was a lovely night on the Thursday. It was cool. Yeah. It was quite a bizarre one because there was a bit of a time rift because um, apparently they stated that they closed the bar about t- uh, five past ten past one <laughs> but i i went to bed it had gone half past three in the morning so <laughs> yeah. i think they had some trouble getting people out of there on the, on the Thursday night from i the had sounds three pints to finish <laughs> <laughs> so you're one of the dirty stuff out there are you i am <laughs> guilty <laughs> you have to ask <laughs> well, was probably you and rami propping up the bar all it night. was actually <laughs> 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 But yeah, we, we met a couple of good entertainers that evening, so... Yeah. Cool. It, was, it was your first one, wasn't it? It was my first one, yes. How did yeah. you find it? Was it what you expected it to be? Um, it, to a degree, it was what I was expected to be. There was a couple of minor disappointments, but it was just because I didn't know the format, I didn't know the layout, and, and I, I didn't have the access to the, the programme. It, 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 it was, that was a, a continual issue with a lot of people I spoke yeah. to. So. That was the one thing that kind of... Well, yeah... Probably just the one issue I 
disappointed with was that there was no VIP bag this year. There was no goodie bag or t-shirt yeah. this year. Yeah. I'm, I'm not so m- bothered about not getting the the books or the t-shirts and stuff like that. But last year they had the full print out mm. um, schedule for everybody. Yeah, they, they were giving them away mm. in boxes, but you had to go and find them and ask for them. Yeah, yeah. Because, and, and they were on the website because you could get them. Yeah, as well. but there was issues with the uh, Wi-Fi down there. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, thankfully not as many issues this year as there were last, last year, year, which was no. good. Uh, so yes, I was actually connected for the entire weekend this year, which was very nice. Yeah. Apart from the Friday for a while. Uh, Friday, Friday, Friday evening was very yeah, yeah, but that was just fine. I think that was just yeah, fine. The amount of use, yeah. yeah. There was a lot to do. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I think we found ourselves kind of going, you know, when do we eat? Yeah. I think yeah. we got to the point <laughs> where we were having like one meal a day and then the rest Indeed. of the time just like guzzling snacks whenever yes. we could. <laughs> we had one meal in the mash and barrel every day and, yeah. a, and a kind of breakfast at, at, at the um, caravan. Yeah. Uh, and the rest of the time we'll just have sausage rolls, crisps, popcorn. Yeah. So what sort of panels and things did people get to then on the Friday? I went to the far flung fiction panel, the first one on the Friday morning. The far fetched fiction. Far fetched fiction, that's the one. Um, with Jonathan Green hosting mm. with his epic tweet of everybody in attendance. Um, that was pretty cool. The spaceport still had a few sound issues, but no one as much as last year. Mm. I mean. All the complaints from last year seem to have been addressed. Most of them fixed. Some of them still obviously work in progress, but they're obviously trying to be resolved. Yeah. So that's really encouraging. Um, I obviously saw your panel on the Saturday. Oh, no, we'll, we'll get to that that's later. Saturday, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're still on Friday. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll get can, to some of my epic can, failures later. <laughs> I can barely remember kind of the order in which things were. We Indeed. definitely went to the... Um, what was on Friday and what was on Saturday. Exactly. We definitely went to the zombie science on the Friday. Yeah, yeah I, I missed that one. I, I, I don't know what, I, I, I can't remember what I was doing at that time. Um, what was the other, what was the other options around that time? I, I, I can't, yeah, yeah, probably food, <laughs> I can't remember. I spent most of my Friday in Forbidden Planet, to be honest, with Danny <laughs> Ware gamefully selling me anything she could. <laughs> happily <laughs> buying anything. I spent, I spent, I made multiple trips back to that <laughs> store and spent a fortune. Um, worth yeah. it. Worth yes, we did every a, penny. We did a fair whack of wandering around the trading area. We got a few signatures. True. We um we went to the we we definitely went to one of the early. Well, we went to the far fetched fiction panel. Yeah. Uh, on the on the Friday, um, <clears throat> we definitely went to the trooper hour, pointless. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, that was yeah, that was definitely one I made. Interesting. <laughs> Cuz Come was on then, Simon. Well, okay, okay. So yeah, I, I volunteered to get up on on stage and be a contestant <laughs> for, for said game show. Um, As um, there were four contestants um, and that was it through the raffle tickets. So yeah, it basically yeah, it was a, a, a sci-fi version of the quiz pointless. And uh, for, for anyone who who know, well, for those who know how it works, uh, on the very first question, I managed to go out with the absolute maximum score possible, which was 200, by getting two wrong answers. Which, you know, I, I, I could bitch and moan about it, and I, I, I've kind of put out my, my thing of, of why I thought I was correct, uh, and why I thought I was robbed. On, but, on one answer? Well, on both of them. On both of them. But not because Major Barrett was there, that was the first one I said, and Chief O'Brien's a given, he's always there in the opening credits whenever he's on an episode. I think the, the mix-up was between, between opening what's an credits. opening credits and what's a title sequence. Indeed. What, what, yeah. what's, what's opening credits and who is a regular? If they said who who is a, a you know who who is actually a, a person rather than a regular. If they who appeared in the title sequence, that's fine. That because was, yeah. the title sequence stops and then the rest of the credits roll while the episode happens. Yeah. But it says on the question opening credits. Yeah, and opening yeah. credits is everything over the action. So I, I agreed. I think it was I, referring to title sequence. So I, I, fair. I stand yeah. vindicated yeah. that I would have gotten two pointless answers and thus the best score ever. <laughs> 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 so in my mind, I won. You're, you're, you're a winner with <laughs> those, dude. <laughs> <laughs> So that yeah, <laughs> it's it just at, at that point I was feeling kind of confident about doing the interview with Rene Aubergine on the Saturday, but then after epically failing with Star Trek questions of all things, it yeah, really smacked you it in the head. Smacked <laughs> my confidence, and for the rest of the day I was just started panicking. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, so the rest of the day we saw so the, the Doctor Austin zombieology panel uh, the show, which was fabulous. Yeah. He was he was very very funny. 
And then after that, it was the Alice on Mars um, opening. That's in right. Stream it was the Al yeah the Alice on Mars mm. uh, launch event for the film. See, I missed both of those for uh, the same reason. I didn't know what was on when because mm. I, 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 we hadn't actually properly hooked up to, to discuss what we were going to go to mm. or find, or, or I didn't find anybody that had a, a listings of what was going on. And I think I'd crashed because of because <laughs> of the Dick. massive Stop amount of mini <laughs> before. before. So I was at crash point during that. So I kept, I didn't come back out till seven eight o'clock then. Yeah, <laughs> which on the Friday night, what was what, what did we have on the main stage on the Friday night? It, it was, was the Imaginarium. It was the Imaginarium, yes, which was uh, a much better affair this year, I thought. That was very entertaining. It was very, very cool, yeah. I think they, again, I think they've taken a lot of the criticism on board over the last couple of years, and they've done an entirely new show. And it was great. There were some, some people there from the last one, but they were the ones that I really liked, people like Mental Dave, who I think is brilliant. That was uh, good, yeah. Who I believe now has a Kickstarter going to make a, a that, rocket that steampunk <laughs> for next year, <laughs> yeah. which looks great. So yeah, go ahead and check that out and fund that because I, I, I want to see Mental Dave with a rocket pack next year. I do believe you said if I have to see Criss Cross doing that same routine for the third year running, I'm going to kill somebody. Probably him, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it was a great show, and it was nice to see some new stuff in there. Um, I think acts of note though I, I enjoyed the mighty moustache i think you went on for yes. a little bit too long but Just i really slightly. did enjoy him and then professor elemental of course having been flying in from kitcon <laughs> was, was genius and yeah he he brought the whole place up again with yes. his uh, i love michael gove yeah that, <laughs> that went down fabulously well indeed <laughs> um and then yeah i think after after that there was uh was it darth elvis after that yeah it was yeah Elvis. Yeah, who I saw most of their set as as the rows of chairs started disappearing in front of us and started being filled with lots of jumping, dancing, drinking cosplayers. Yes, and, which a, few, was and a few furries thrown in. There, there were a few furries kicking there, around. There certainly the was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there were a few costumes that I imagine just were should not have been by done. the end of the weekend. <laughs> it's quite. <laughs> But we bowed out early. We did bow out early on the Saturday, on the Friday night. Yes, yeah. just down to for good reason, rising yeah. levels of abject panic on yeah. my behalf. I think it was. Yeah. Darth Elvis were cool, but I think I was just a bit too tired and stressy to stick around and watch Attica Rage. Did anyone watch Attica Rage? No, I didn't see. It. Um, I, I watched some of it um, and then went over to the spaceport and went. Oh, that's better. Because they, were they? Supposed to be a rock cover set from Attica Rage. Yeah, but um, to be fair, it wasn't the greatest of bands I've heard. Okay, fair enough. Um, fair enough. No, they, they were a good enough sort of band, but mm. it didn't kind of fit well with the sci-fi weekend right, my, okay. for my sort of taste for it. Fair enough. Just it just didn't didn't work. Did they seem it generally well received. They seemed generally well received, and and the masses were sort of up and dancing with it but I think by that point they didn't come on till sort of half 10 11 o'clock at night anyway so most people were three parts pissed and you throw anybody up there with a guitar and a few vocals yeah, we'll try that out next year shall yeah. we <laughs> so you know in, in fairness to in fairness to them you know if they were on a bit earlier they would have had a, a, a proper response to a rock yeah. band and they probably would have had a, a, a better performance back but I think as a late night own they were dragging a bit so. fair enough so yeah, that was that was Friday, uh, which brings us to Saturday. Uh, now, yeah, basically I think I went straight over to the the main void to get ready for for my interview thing, and for some reason or other, the first panel in the main void didn't happen. On yeah. Saturday it was a comics panel. Yes, yeah, it was like split cavalry and skin and all that. Like. Yeah. I think they would probably been dirty stuff out the night before as well. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, but so so that didn't occur. So uh, it ended up being me opening up the stage on the sat on the Saturday, which again was kind of that moment of blind right. and abject <laughs> panic because there was there was no one there to introduce me or anything. I was chatting to the the stage manager guy Ming, the stage manager called Ming, <laughs> Pretty genius. Perfect, yeah. <laughs> uh, and he was just like, well, yeah, just carry on. So I I literally met René Aubergine about a minute before going, going on stage. stage. And I was like, yeah, hi, how you doing? And then he was like, yeah, just off you go. I was like, what, now? Like, yeah, all right. Yeah, so now. <laughs> so I just stormed straight out on stage. And obviously you can hear 
the, the, the full interviews up on, on, on the website so you can hear that and hear, hear me make almost the worst faux pas possible at a sci-fi convention. Almost. Which is to get Star Wars and, and Star Trek confused. <laughs> Which you weren't the only one. I, I hope not, because <laughs> <laughs> Sam Stone did it the night before. Did you? Yeah. Oh, okay, that's fair enough. Because I, I I started saying it, and then I caught myself saying almost saying Star Wars, and just and I just kind of stopped and went. I, didn't even, I can't believe I nearly did that. And I think I stopped in the middle of the speech yeah. and just said that to the audience, and was just like, oh god, because I was already I, that was at the point where I was apologising for the epic failure yeah. of the pointless. So I was like, oh god. Uh, so yeah, I didn't think it was going to go well for me then. They went brilliant, though. But they were, yeah, they went fine. We had a, a brief technical hiccup by the look of it in terms of recording the podcast because we seemed to miss the first like couple of minutes. I think it must have been because uh, if I listen back to the recording, it sounds like Renee's mic is a, is a bit lower than mine, and so I think he was trying to resolve those and accidentally cut the feed off that yeah. was going through to my desk. Uh, so I, the, the only thing you're missing is you're missing me introduce in well no no the introduction went fine it was the, the sitting down and, and me admitting that little mermaid's one of my favorite films and him singing yes. les poissons yeah yeah <laughs> was, uh, so that's that's just a little gem just for the people who were there that weekend well bell got uh Le poisson sent, sent to us three times. Uh, yeah indeed yeah megan got it as well so yeah that was yeah that was, that was yeah megan that was funny she gets uh, I, w- I want to ask a question well, let's let somebody else have a go. You've already been up on stage on Pointless and asked God knows how many questions. We'll, we'll let someone else have a go. But I want to ask a question. Okay, run the questions through me first. <laughs> so we did a couple of iterations of questions and she had a hand up. And I'm like, you really do need to let somebody else have a go. Please let somebody else have a go. And then uh, Simon was ignoring her and ignoring her and ignoring her. <laughs> and, and you could see that Rene was kind of looking at him and sort of like, oh, poor little girl, he's ignoring her. <laughs> poor little girl. Poor little child the... down there. That poor little wife who's straining to get up on the stage. Said, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to you in a minute, darling. It's okay. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, God, he, he thinks, well, he thinks we're being mean. He thinks we're being mean. And then he said, actually, that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've spoken to you already. What, what more do you have to ask? <laughs> I had no idea about that at all. Because he's, he's going like, oh, yes, we've already spoken. I'm like, have you? <laughs> when? <laughs> 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 uh, at the signing just before. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. Well, I died no concept because I hadn't seen them since I got went out in the morning. It's the secret life of Megan. It is. We never know yeah. quite what she gets up to. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think from my perspective, I think the interview went really well. Yeah. Uh, it felt a bit strained at first, but then I think it eased mm. into it quite well. And then, you know, he started getting more and more anecdotal as it went on to the point where, you know, I think the last question that was asked, I think I said time for a couple more. Somebody asked a question and then 15 minutes later, yeah. I'm looking at my clock and going, oh, I'm going to have to actually say, you know, no more questions, stop talking yeah. now. No, no, I was, I, was, I was worrying I was actually going to have to stop him talking before he got to the end of his story. And I just really didn't want to do that. But then he got right to the end of the story. I was like, oh, thank God for that. <laughs> and that, that finished off. So, yeah, it was good. All in all, yeah, a terrifying experience. And at that point, he relaxed. And but he I'm had to go to into the spaceport and pick up a beer. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was in need of a beer after that. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think it went rather well. And it seems to have gone down fairly well. You were well received. Yeah. You were well received as a host of the panel, for sure. Yeah, so I uh, had a chat with, with Neil afterwards. And you know, hopefully we'll be back next year doing more, more. of the same. And, yeah. and, and, and more, more besides, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Be cool watch this space just need to work on a program of stuff that we can do yeah other things are really like just a minute yeah so yeah there, there were other panels after i went on stage that wasn't the end of the weekend <laughs> <laughs> that was the start of mine really but yeah. uh yeah so just a minute was again brilliant uh jonathan green absolute star yes <laughs> I, I love that he is now uh Robert Rankin's evil steampunk nemesis. That's genius. That was funny. Yes. A badge which he is now wearing with pride. <laughs> As I believe after a conversation I had with him, it's like, yeah, that's it. I, I am now his evil steampunk nemesis. Well, of course, we have Jonathan Green coming back on the show soon. Hopefully so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we haven't got a confirmed date yet, otherwise I, I would be plugging that now. But yes, he will be coming back on the show. We had a lovely catch-up Indeed. with him on the Saturday night. So that was great to kind of finish that off sitting having a chat with him. Is my haircut through and out though? Um, apparently so. Yeah, you're you're, 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 you're Clark Kented him, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't recognise him out of long hair. <laughs> Maybe you should just get a wig for the weekend. 
Cl- clip on ponytail. <laughs> 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 yeah. So yeah, other, other panels that were on after that, there was another Dr. Austin, which I think I caught the, the end of, which I was about the spreading of that. viruses. Yeah, because I think we'd ended up going for food again in the mash and barrel for our one meal a day. Um, and then it was Festival of the Spoken Festival Nerd. Festival of the Spoken Nerd. Yes, that was good. My that was God, awesome. they were funny. Yeah, that was genius. That was per- the, the perfect level for them, you know, geeks and nerds and spreadsheets and mathematicians. And yeah, that, that was a, a, good, a good audience for them. Uh, well. <laughs> we have shapes of. Uh, you got your shapes of continuous width. width. Did you Did you see them? No. Ah, oh, you missed. I it. have solids of. Co- yeah, constant. Continuous width. width. Yeah, or, or constant width. Yeah, something like. That. Basically, it's a shape that behaves like a circle, but looks more like a triangle. So you could use them as wheels, because they are a continuous width all the way around, but they're not a sphere. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, without something physical to see. Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, imagine, imagine uh, four-sided dice. Yeah. But with rounded all the corners energy. rounded. Yes. Okay. Yes. And with all the sides rounded. Yeah. Not every rounded. side rounded. So anyway, there are still yes. points on it and things, but it behaves. It rolls like, like a yeah. a sphere. Uh, it's it's very 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 good. And the mold effect, of course, yes. which is uh, yeah an effect of yeah. you know you pull like lots of steel baubles out of a jar and they fly up in the air and stuff. It was all very geeky and nerdy and a spreadsheet of a photo done with conditional formatting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> a whole room of people cheering on conditional formatting. It was yes. awesome. Conditional formatting in Excel getting rounds of rapturous applause. <laughs> it actually that threw, that it really threw that him, didn't it? Uh, it really did yeah. throw him. He's like, fuck, I didn't expect this. Yeah. <laughs> Spreadsheets! Woo! Oh, what? <laughs> yeah. It was a spreadsheet of a photo of him doing a spreadsheet of a photo. <laughs> <laughs> Infinite recursion. God, I missed it. <laughs> and so, and a pix- it was brilliant. It just in a, in a tritone pixel yeah. format. Yeah. It, yeah. Basically, it was done like a TV pixel, so you had RGB values between naught and 255, yeah. and that was what was the conditional formatting. And when you zoomed out, then you eventually saw the picture. But put into a spreadsheet. Fuck him on a spreadsheet. So you, you can just about get the level of nerd there. <laughs> Cool. There were experiments of uh, electrifying a pickle <laughs> to illuminate the to illuminate to make it it <laughs> pickle as a lamp. Yeah. And turning fire. And yeah, the fire vortex thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was awesome. Uh, so yeah, that was very very cool. And um, again, for later. So, uh, I, I met the two guys briefly from Festival Spoken Nerd because I went backstage and went, "Hi, yeah. how you doing?" I've, I met Helen and she's up to coming on the show and stuff yeah. and said hi. And they were, yeah. Uh, uh, so yes, Helen is booked. Helen Arney, but is the other part of Spe- Festival of the Spoken Nerd who wasn't there. <laughs> yes. So I, I've kind of seen the two guys doing it and the, the Helen doing hers separately. So now I've got to kind of like mix them both together in my mind and, and that'll be what the actual on, full show yeah. is like. And that's twenty for May. Yeah, that's yeah, that's May. Yeah, so that's yeah, two months, two months time. She's on the show. I was off in the Galactic Knights cadet training program. Ah, we did you do that? that. Yeah, we never got the time to. Yeah. But that was pretty fun. How was it? Um, oh, I made a class of fool of myself. And, uh, I had to join the club. And I, <laughs> I had the Galactic Knights uh, in stitches laughing, but it was, it was worth it. It was fun. Did you there, was, there was eight of us in the group, so we were split into two, two teams of four. And the first part of the training was basically just a, a laser target game. So you have to turn the targets to your team's colour, and whichever team won, after all the problems had sort of like played, got to enter the pit first, and get a 60 second advantage to sort of find spots to hide. And it was basically a, a big mine room by mine room inflatable quasar zone. Ah, in, so it was an inflatable one, was it? Yeah. Well, that, yes and no. This is where the confusion came for me. It was definitely something that you inflated. But it wasn't like a bouncy castle on the inside, which is what I was expecting, which is where I went the horribly, was horribly wrong. Oh dear. <laughs> so, I'm on the red team, and the red team, we, we destroyed the blue team. Like, all the blue team fired, and I was just still waiting 
to, to shoot a target because they were all my team's colour already, but they were just hopeless. So we get the 60 second head start, I get the big gun, and we're all lined up, and I'm pretty sure it was Leo in his clone trooper armour, where he's like, giving us all the proper dressing down and stuff. And the entrance to the actual combat zone was like really narrow and really thin. And I thought, if I go first, I'm going to have to like awkwardly step through it, or or I can just fucking dive through it. Because <laughs> it's, it's inf- expecting an inflatable. It's, you, you, it's, infla- you it's inflatable, right? It looks inflatable. <laughs> Why's everyone got their shoes on? Ah, oh, they probably just forgot to take them off. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to be a bouncy floor on the side of that thing. So Leo's counting down, and my usual thing is to like always let somebody else go first in case I make a fool of myself by going first but this time I was like no <laughs> throw caution to the wind I was just like no fuck it I'm going first so when he gets to zero I've got a big uh, machine gun laser pistol fucking bomb it forward head first dive through the store hit solid concrete on the other side of it and just hear laugh from the other side I was like oh well up a day <laughs> find some place to hide <laughs> Did you get really hurt? No, it was fine. <laughs> um, all all you know was just the gun slapping against the floor. I was like, I've broken that. I'm sure I've broken that. <laughs> but I hadn't broken it. It was fine. Um, that was really only one bruise. We won that as well. Excellent. So it was worth it. We came out. It was worth it. the pain. It was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> We came out and yeah, they were saying thanks. Nobody's made us laugh all weekend apart from you. <laughs> I was like, it was like you didn't film it, did you? And some guys went, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Where's the video footage? So yeah, I reckon oh, we, we want to see so that. If you have the footage, there. please send, send it, it in. Yeah, I'm sure, have this. I'm sure we'll be on the GK site somewhere. <laughs> but, so that was cool, but that was just hilarious. It was so much fun. Yeah, that sounds cool. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that just springs to mind the, the, the old Han Solo garbage compactor moment. <laughs> yeah, <woo. laughs> yeah. Yeah. So then around that time, there was the, the theatre performance. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, yeah. It was a theatre performance. Didn't go down particularly well. I think it was just... Wrong a, order. Yeah, wrong After order. After having I a think, high yeah. energy, and then the high energy of the cosplay, it was, it was put in the wrong... Time slot. Yeah. I, I, after the up that was best on the spoken nerd, yeah. it was it was too much down. I heard a lot of people say that. Uh, yeah. Well. So yeah. Uh, live and learn. It's yeah. yeah. I and didn't stick around the next year. Yeah. Well, we ended up yeah. bailing and going over yeah. to the the, uh, the other bar and yeah. just chilling with all the cosplayers over there. So that was cool. And then there was the cosplay. And then there was the cosplay cosplay. final. (laughs) The masquerade ball, the cosplay final. Which was opened with style. Thank you, Sue. That was awesome. It was. (laughs) (laughs) Cherry Bomb, Sue Haddle, doing a boom shake the room dressed as Death of Rats, as promised in her Facebook status if she got 50 likes on it. I think she underestimated how how many people would want to see that. (laughs) Yeah, Uh, I think so too. You nailed it, and you fully deserved yeah, the audience yeah. award. That was awesome. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, yeah. congrats yeah. for you. Know, and I'm pretty sure I well deserved all didn't lose my voice at that point. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's where I lost my voice. You lost our voice. Yeah. I, d- I didn't get it back for a good four or five days. Chant the chants for death of rats, death of rats. Yeah, death and, of rats. Squeak, squeak, and squeak, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, earlier, uh, earlier on in the competition, the girls were standing next to us to turn around to one of our party and go, dude, you're fucking loud. And he's like, I'm sorry, I'll... I'll and she's like, no, no, it's cool, but it's like, you're pretty loud, man. <laughs> and then at the end of the night, she's like, it was worth everything just to hear you grown lads shout and squeak at the stage <laughs> for Death of Rats. But, yeah. But the costumes were There were some immense costumes. I, mean, I was going to say, were, were there any standout costumes that you I mean, guys The Lord of the Rings the Lord of the Rings, brilliant. The Lord of the Rings cosplayers, they were just phenomenal. They were slick. Yeah. Tariel was just incredible. That costume was yeah. brilliant. Um, one which I think got overlooked which, which was brilliant was the classic 70s uh, PSG Viper Pilot costumes yeah yeah they were, they really, were good really good yeah, yeah. Um, I thought the Minion was brilliant whoever the yeah, Minion but was they didn't, they didn't get into the uh, finals did they no yeah. uh, I thought that was a genius costume yeah. and the they uh, were too late for registration the cardboard Transformers I oh they were good really yeah, yeah. They were Ultimate brilliant. Prime and Grimlock yeah. yeah fucking brilliant <laughs> they were genius I, I have a very yeah Soft place in my heart for uh, cardboard, cardboard cosplay the last <laughs> couple of years. So it was, who won it? It was the Chaos Marine, uh, no, it was the Space Marine. It was the one, Space Marine, it, yeah, 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 the one, yeah. The Lord of the Rings Hobbit crew 
was second, and then it was uh, Doc Brown. Ah, oh, yes, yeah, Doc yeah, Brown. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yes, again, Fair play. also yeah. brilliant. But there were some really good costumes. There were. There were some brilliant ones. I keep seeing it. I keep looking through people's pictures now and seeing loads I didn't see around yeah. at the weekend. Sure. Slave Leia. Oh, the crossplay oh, of Slave Leia. Yeah. yeah. I think a, a social mention is all for the crossplay Avengers. The crossplay of Avengers, Just yes. Just Jeff being a, yeah. <laughs> being, a, being a sexy Black Widow. Big ups to Jeff <laughs> as, as Black Widow. That was awesome. <laughs> and nailing the pose as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fair play. So, yeah. Fair, fair, God, fair God. play to the crossplay Avengers. That they was cool. sweet. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Sue winning the audience vote was great. Yeah. yeah. Death of Rats was a fantastic. Definitely well deserved. Yeah. So it came with um, um, a great comment from David because during the, the cosplay, Belle fell asleep and she was dressed up as Professor Stegg from the Neil Gaiman um, Fortune of the Milk. 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 So he said, well, I was trying to take the baby Stegosaurus to bed, but I was frightened of tripping over the Native American Indian's feet, and it was very difficult to get past the minion. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, that isn't a normal Sentences statement of how you take your child home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the, the sci-fi weekender is the place where normal statements <laughs> are. Yeah. Last, la, last year, what sticks with me from last year was, you haven't lived until you've seen Pac-Man leading a conga. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another another wonderful one, I think was in the spaceport, and it, it might have been on the Friday, was, um, was Jar Jar Binks getting chased around the spaceport oh, by yeah. all the stormtroopers. Oh, that God. was funny. That, that was quite yeah. hilarious. Was, was that a green screen, Jar Jar Binks? Yeah. 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 You should have seen it... When he went up to see because that was the same guy who played who was do, who did the calm oh. yes it is cosplay yes. on Saturday it is yeah oh, um, oh, I wish his microphone had been working on the on Saturday which one sorry I wish I wish his microphone had been working on Saturday uh, so yeah for his speech probably do the calm yeah. speech you heard him show bits of it but so that jazz jar costume had quite an effect on Bell yes. She's only six. She spent the whole time going, I can see his willy. <laughs> <laughs> she just stood there staring at him. Mesmerised. <laughs> and then she recognised him in his Khan outfit as well. We were wondering how. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he had tight dresses. <laughs> um, uh, uh, he was actually in front of me in that get up uh, going up to see Lewis McLeod, <laughs> which was quite. <laughs> yeah, because apparently he was a, a great. Uh, did a oh, great panel. Fantastic panel, yeah. No, I didn't see that one. It was. Um, and that was a Sam Stone hosted one. Yeah. yeah. That was where the faux, faux pas was. He said Star Trek. Right, okay, yeah. cool. But, oh. Absolutely brilliant guy, a heck of a comedian and, and absolute genius with, with his vocals. Sebulba. Sebulba, yeah. sorry, from Star Wars, yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, but he, he's, I mean, he's very sort of broad Glaswegian in his natural, but to hear him talking in all these different, very sort of London and, and, and posh aristocratic sort of voices, it's just very, very disturbing. Like, what? I didn't just... want to see that one, but we ended up not doing. You know, it's just one of these things. Yeah, I can't. I can't remember why we didn't get to that one. I think with our group, it was one of the things that just had to give way for food. Yeah, <laughs> I think uh, similarly. I think we were eating when that one was on. Cause, Shame, yeah, because that, that was quite a, a good. Because uh, I think we we because Graham McTavish I think was on around the same time as well. We missed him as well, so I think we must have been. Yeah, Graham McTavish was on just too. before I think. Yeah. On, on, uh, on the other side. Yeah. We need to do something next year to get around this food problem. And get like food milkshakes or something to keep us going. Yeah, food. yeah, like astronaut ice cream and stuff. Yeah. Drips, maybe somehow, or I don't know, because this food's taking up too much time. It does, yeah, it takes up valuable geekery. Yeah. You need like a little mini cool box on a backpack with all your food sources in there. <laughs> Trail rations. Yeah. <laughs> Trail rations. A fucking bag of peanuts with some raisins in it. It's fucking <laughs> fucking trail ration. Pepper army, dude, the ultimate trail ration. <laughs> in my day, we'd pick leaves off hawthorn and eat the berries with the leaves. <laughs> See, you can, you can. tell. They, they are okay. yeah. 
You can tell the uh, standard of the fried food at the weekend because on the way home, Megan uh, got herself a tuna niçoise salad from <laughs> yeah. uh, from Waitrose and was sort of like going, nutrients! Because the <laughs> child comes out craving nutrients. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> you can have Burger King or anything. No, I want salad. <laughs> was that at Telford Services? Yes, oh, it was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But where we bumped into the rankings because we were sat eating and Megan was wearing her Dalmatian onesie. So Robert Rankin came in and went, You're Spoticus! <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> it was uh, yeah. the normal game at Telford of spot the uh, wristband. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't stop for long though this time round. Last yeah. last year we all met up there again. Well, it? yeah, we did. Yeah, we all bumped into each other on the way back there. But yeah, so th- this time we just there were, there were a couple of people we hadn't seen over the weekend, but we kind of like we know they were there because of wristbands and t-shirts and stuff. Um, and then the rankings just wandered in just as we were about to leave, and that was that was lovely. <laughs> the reason why she was in a onesie though was because she said that she couldn't be bothered getting. She dressed. refused to get That's dressed. Enough, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so I wasn't just beaten by Megan in a lightsaber fight. I was beaten by Megan in a Dalmatian onesie <laughs> in a lightsaber <laughs> fight. So, yeah. <laughs> Who was <laughs> wearing the onesie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that, one of my favourites, though, was, uh, was the uh, guy dressed up as Wilfred. He did yeah. a very good one. Yeah. He, he looked, he looked yeah, spot cool. on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there were a ton of like really oh, random was. cosplays kicking around that I just kind of see them and go, ah, yeah, yeah. cool. Brian oh, Blessed. Yes, yes, there was Voltan, 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 Voltan yeah. Yeah. Wow. and the rest of the Flash Gordon crew. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I saw a pretty good Joker, uh, New 52 face as a mm. mask Joker walking around. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I, I didn't see any Poison Ivies this year. There were yeah, a lot of one. Yeah, there was about three or four. Oh, <coughs> Nowhere two, near two. as many as last year's London Film and Comic Con, where everybody was either Harley Quinn or Poison Ivy. Yeah. So yeah, not not so much this year. That was good though. Yeah. Was nice, nice that we had. That I think I saw at least five different David Tennant doctors though. There was <laughs> yes, yeah, and and one uh, just the outfit was pretty good. He was very short and blonde and fluffy. Oh, I, I don't know. Yeah, they, they, they were just low. <laughs> I, I think he had a, a beard and <laughs> bloody curly blonde hair. I was like, okay. He was just like wandering in and go, oh, look, there's, there's David Tennant playing crazy golf. Oh, there's David Tennant having a beard. There's, <laughs> there's having coffee. There's bungee jumping. And it's, it's David Tennant everywhere. <laughs> what was it we were saying about the idea of doing like a, a group cosplay? Like everybody dressing exactly the same. Yeah, or like, well, yeah, well, we, we, everybody dressing as the Flash and like standing in a line. <laughs> well, then, <laughs> like then the other one is, a, line as well, is yeah. for everyone to be in the Flash and come in and do kind of a song and dance routine, and then you'd be a Flash mob. Yes. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> <laughs> the door. <laughs> Doors right there. Isn't it? <laughs> oh. I thought it was quite good. <laughs> you know what the answer to that was? Do you know what the answer to that was? You're Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a bunch of people dressed as Flash Gordon with sticks. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Burning torches. Yeah. 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 Pitchforks. Yeah. Uh, That's a Flash mob. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I think it would be brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Although you've now told the world. Well, yeah. Or, or so have, a, or, 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 take it. Somebody do it next or, year. Or, or, just have, or just have a big group of people in a giant raincoat. If you do that next year, I will buy you all a beer. There you go. You had to hear first, <laughs> That's Simon is buying year. you a beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buying yeah, yeah. You a beer. Yeah, yeah. Brendan and I will be in the sidelines. Nerd versus world are not buying anyone a beer. <laughs> Simon <laughs> is buying you a beer. Ah. If you do a flash mob of the flash mob. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> really, really. The more I think about it, the more I think it's a brilliant idea ever. <laughs> <laughs> See? I think it's, I think it's, a, funny, it's, a, it's a funny cosplay idea. I like it. Um, <laughs> You're never going to get that out of your head now. I'm not, I'm not. Um, we'll see you all there next year. <laughs> yeah. I think the, the, the one of the highlights for me was seeing Chewbacca 
on yeah, Saturday was, night. Was, oh, he was brilliant anyway, but it was even more brilliant the fact that I think he managed to get quite inebriated through his costume. <laughs> he was he he got a bit of a stagger. <laughs> I, I, I don't know whether it's too much inebriation drunk, it's just like utter dehydration from being in that costume. So. Oh no, he was drunk. <laughs> Yeah, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Drunken Wookie. You do see some wonderful things. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> and some things that you just really don't want to see. I so, think yes. it is all that hanging around atmosphere. Yeah. Um, the, the hanging around and the dressing up and, and that sort of silliness is, is the best yeah. thing about yeah. it. Mm, for sure. So, summary then. Best, best part of the weekend. Um, I'm going to go with your panel. Thank you. <laughs> I thought your panel was phenomenal. I High praise indeed. Well, um, yeah, very well. And then, panels aside, Imaginarium for me was good. Cool. Yeah. And the fact, sorry, uh, sorry, Brendan, I need to go. No, the fine. fact that they actually served draft hobgoblin the entire weekend <laughs> and they didn't fucking run out. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your your panel and the Craddock Knights training thing. That cool. was a personal high for me. The training thing. Um, I really liked Festival of Spoken Nerd yeah. and Professor Elemental. I, to, I think Festival of Spoken Nerd are one of my highlights of the weekend. Uh, I mean, I, I would say my panel is one of my highlights of the weekend because it was getting to meet René Aubergeon yeah. and he was a dude. He was, yeah. he was fabulous. Just, you know, to see him relax as much as he did on stage Fantastic. made me very, very happy that I'd made him feel relaxed enough because yeah. he, he just kind of melted into his chair and was just sat sideways on the chair. I, 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 I don't know whether I've actually tweeted the picture or not yet. I don't think I have. But uh, as I was keeping an eye on the time while I was talking to him, and it was while he was sat sideways on in the chair with his legs over the arms of the chair, yes. and I, I, was, I subtly took a picture of him like that on the stage as I was looking like I was checking the time. So I'll have to tweet that picture because that was, that was lovely. It just yeah. seemed so relaxed, which was great. So I, I felt happy that I'd done it, you know, and it was, it was worth stressing about and everything but yeah it was good fun um other than that yes festival of the spoken nerd professor elemental again he's a star um what else oh I, I, I think it was just again meeting a ton of new people yeah and i, I, I love yes. old friends as well yeah it is it was seeing everybody you know all the people who've been on this show over the last year catching up with all them again who mm. i haven't seen for ages and just chatting over beers and that was nice meeting yeah. lots of new people I, I love it it's a wonderful wonderful atmosphere where I just go along and you know you, know you have something in common with these people so yeah. you can just talk to them and I love that I absolutely love it I've always loved it in kind of rock clubs and stuff because you always have that one thing that you can talk about and you know you can kind of look at somebody and go oh, I bet he likes the crow and you can talk to them <laughs> <laughs> and, and you could be 90% certain that they're a role player or you, you yeah. know <laughs> it's that kind of thing that when you go to a weekend like, I mean admittedly it's it's a lot more diverse now given the size of the the sheer scale of the event but you can be guaranteed to have at least something in common with anyone you stop and talk to and that's what I love about it yeah have yeah I've got, oh, I've got nothing to add to that I, I can t I entirely agree yeah have um, people were a lot more chatty and friendly yeah, yeah. so it was a lot easier to talk to yeah. people than Absolutely. it was so yeah by all means if, if you went this year I hope you had a great time as we did and we'll if you didn't you go this year. year we will see you there next year yeah. come talk to us and indeed we'll we will be around there. again all weekend um, yeah we will see you there so yeah, yeah. that was that on the sci-fi weekend then, yeah. for another year <laughs> Now we're going to start planning next year. Yep, and what are we going to do? <laughs> we've got our cosplay sorted. <laughs> well, yeah, the flash mob, yeah, indeed. <laughs> relatively easy, just a t-shirt, blonde wig, pitchfork. <laughs> Burning torch. <laughs> Great. Right. Cool. Okay, anyways, on, on, on to other things for whatever time we've got left. Um, oh, we'll go to very Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to talk about Walking Dead? Walking Dead. Season finale. I do and I don't. Because <laughs> uh, after the high of talking about the sci-fi weekend and after the high of what was an excellent end, well, an excellent back half of season four of Walking Dead, yeah. 
I was pretty fucking let down by the season finale, in all fairness. I'm entirely with you. I, I know I've spoken about it before on the show that I felt The Walking Dead jumped the shark with uh, the pre-season The, the big prison finale. battle and, yeah, and Herschel, Herschel and everything. But they, they brought it back and the episodes, the second half of the season, have been fantastic. In fact, um, they've been so sparse. They've, been, they've reverted back to the survivalism mm. and the ethical nature of the decisions you have to make in this sort of scenario. The sheer brutality of the Grove. Oh, God, just look at the uh, <laughs> I, I, well, we, but the I, AD obviously hasn't seen it. I know Emma hasn't. We won't go into it too much, but just... Uh, it's worth bearing with Walking Dead for everything that's happened in it so far, just to watch that episode. Yeah. That is a gut punch out of nowhere, that episode. And it was phenomenal. Yeah. It's one of the best episodes of the show not just the season yeah the, absolutely the agree um, without a shadow of a doubt mm. it's so hard hitting and it just focuses on on one of the groups of characters as they've kind of abandoned the prison mm. uh, and it's yeah it's absolutely amazing episode should so you, harsh if you get a chance to watch the talking dead episode that followed that because it had, some, it had uh, Melissa McBride on that that episode that's worth a watch too, just for the behind the scenes looks at, at, at that particular episode. But yeah, it was a, a a bleak, dark, traumatic episode. Yeah. yeah. So I thought that was a, that was a wonderful, wonderful episode, and then I think the one after it was pretty good as well, uh, which kind of led was it Rick's group up to oh no it was Glenn and Maggie's yeah. group up to uh, Terminus, and then I thought the final episode when Rick's group hit terminus was just a wet fish it was nothing yeah it was a just a bit of a letdown of an episode really i felt that there was something coming but it fades into black and then credits yeah it didn't seem like a finale no no it really didn't it it felt like a, a, a pre advert scene that there was going to do something afterwards yeah. that would just be the big leaving on a huge cliffhanger or something like that but it was just no, it just stopped. So, yeah. Sorry, we can't talk too much about it, as, as you guys haven't seen it, but it, after what was a phenomenal couple of episodes in the weeks leading up to it, it just it really felt like a bit of a letdown, that final episode. Agreed. Agreed. I guess that, that, that's all we'll have to say on it for now. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll possibly pick it up and start doing episode recaps of that because we've just started doing episode recaps and things on, on the website now I've just in your Game of Thrones one indeed yeah. yeah did you like my Game of Thrones one I did I thought your uh, your line of the episode was, was spot on <laughs> yeah the quote of the episode yeah absolutely <laughs> everybody seems to be agreeing with the choice of that one <laughs> of course you've got your sword as I said I need to uh, I've not seen that because I can't get a, a good stream for it yet yeah but I mean uh, again I, it was it was a good opener, but I felt it could have done with being twice as long with a bit more in it. I actually felt it was pretty strong as it was. Um, <laughs> twice as long with a bit more in it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help it, sorry. It's all right, it's taken a year. Pray continue. <laughs> <laughs> she said. <laughs> so I'm watching it from a different point of view than Simon, because I've read them all. Mm. So I'm yes. watching them with knowing who everybody is and what their interrelations are. I think that the series as a whole really hasn't gone into the interconnections between the different families and the different characters. And I think that people do get very confused. Mm. And I think it was the Daily Mash did a spoof article saying that the first episode of Game of Thrones should just, just be an hour, yeah. an hour of introductions, yeah. Yeah. which actually wouldn't hurt, no, oddly, yeah. even though it is a spoof. Um, yeah, I think that's the thing you've got to dig up with, with, with the, the recaps that I'm writing. They are very much from my perspective, not knowing the books. And I was talking to you about it afterwards, and you were like, well, that's that, and that's that. It's like, yeah, but I didn't get that from the episode, yeah. and I'm only going off what I know and what it's telling me. It, this season is going to be very exciting. Um, it's 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 a great season. Um, I think it's going to be a, a fan favourite this season. Oh, like yeah, dragon I, sword fights. Uh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, dead people. I, I'm totally reading between the lines of what that means. <laughs> 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 I think a certain insufferable yeah. prick is going to read the demise. 
<laughs> we can but don't. <laughs> Fingers crossed, folks. If it happens, it'll happen in episode nine. That's when everybody dies. Well, no, no. I mean, episode nine is when the harsh thing happens. So that yeah. the harsh thing isn't Joffrey dying. That's something everybody will be up and jumping away. Yay! Let's go upstairs. Episode four or five, then. <laughs> As I said, Jack Reese, I feel so sorry for you, dude. You must get such an immense amount of shit from people for playing that character. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> uh, my favourite uh, picture involving him is, is the one on Facebook that said, "If I was any more inbred, I'd be a sandwich." <laughs> <laughs> or a cat. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but uh, so yeah, so I'm I, I do know all the interconnections of all the characters, which Simon doesn't. So we have a very different perspective on, on on how things go. I haven't read the books, but I have long since given up expecting TV or film adaptations of books to be wholly loyal to the subject yeah. material, because it made me upset about a great number of films. It's not wholly loyal. They have they have mucked it about a bit to make it more simplistic but they have to do that yeah that's yeah. the thing it's like, it's like I, a Terry I, Pratchett uh, mucked about a bit by <laughs> <laughs> so I remember that from the start of um, the, uh, the the Terry Pratchett serials that Sky One did ah uh, yes it would always have as instead of like written by it would be mucked, mucked about, about a bit by yes by because <laughs> yes the, I mean all the miscellany and Stannis stuff is all kind of out of whack but that's fine. Yeah, no, if it I, has I, to be to I think, I think get the story across, then that's it. what. There has to be artistic it's... license to change it for the different format. I, I, I have long since come to accept that. And so now I don't necessarily get so ragey. I get ragey about other things instead. Yeah, we'll come on to that in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, slowly, it's slowly building. I know the rest of my is coming. <laughs> <laughs> but I think they're doing a very good job of the adaptations. Yeah. I think I think they very good job. They may perhaps you know and we'll have to see how it goes because I, I know which kind of the major threads are and it wasn't necessarily what Simon thought the major threads might be. What he thought was fairly insignificant actually turns out to be very significant. Mm. But we'll we'll just see how that goes. Yeah, yeah but I, I just pick up on on different things in the episodes and you know well, along for certain things you know to see how many bits of Theon Greyjoy are left. Things like that. The fact that, that, that it's attention. The two swords and it opened with the swords and it showed went back to Sean Bean and so therefore you thought definitely the swords were the most important part of the episode. Well yeah. Which, Valerian steel was the word you were looking for. for yes, it was. I know I got told that, but I left it with the edit because I say I'm going with with my gut reaction to the episode. So that was literally written after I watched the episode. I went, Bleh. there you go. That's my thoughts. Yes, you do live on with a, an expert on. You, you will get honest reactions in yeah. my recaps. That's fair. <laughs> I think that's what even though he to read as well as an honest gut gut reaction. Yeah, he will be corrected. But he won't add the corrections in. No, That's fair enough. So I, I will know next time that, that Valerian steel is the, is the thing. That Valerian. Valerian <laughs> steel. <laughs> Valorian! Like, no, oh shit, that's a completely different genre. Delorean steel. <laughs> Delorean. <laughs> Don't you sound like Delorean? So, it, it, judging by what's happened in the previous episode, so um, what's his face that was the blonde elf now is a brunette ranger? Oh, Dario yeah. Naharis. Dario Naharis. Is he the same kind of thing as the other guy who shapeshifted into somebody else? No. No, all right. I think he's just been recast, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. 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 He's meant to have a blue beard, and but he doesn't. So he doesn't look like the way he's described in the books either. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Yeah. But yeah, it was nice to see Arya getting kick-ass in this yeah. episode. I mean, Dylan Payne should be back, but of course he's dead, so I don't know if they've recast him or they just tried to write him out. Don't know. I, did. I, I don't even know who the character is, so. You know the guy who died a year ago? No. I don't remember. No? Really? Mm. Jack Devoe? Mm. Oh, then the mate. What was the, what was the character then? The character was in pain. He's the executioner. He's the one who took uh, Ed Stark's. Oh, head. right, okay. He's also the guy who guards Cersei and the noble ladies. In the Red Keep during the invasion of Blackwater, right? That yeah. episode. And okay. he teaches um, Jamie how to use his to fight again. Because oh. he laughs at him a lot because he can't laugh because he had his tongue cut out, so he just makes a clicking noise. 
And of course, Jamie's got to relearn now that he's left-handed. Okay, so maybe, I wonder how they've dealt with that then. Maybe they just recast that. That's what I'm going to be we'll interested see. to yeah, find we'll out. Okay, cool, yeah. Because he does crop up a lot in the books, but whether or not we'll just. Because he's on Arya's list as well, isn't he? So. Yeah. Mm. And I missed the lamenting of Hodor in this episode. Oh, yeah. no, Hodor. no Hodor. No Hodor. This uh, question on Facebook, which was, who do you think has the best life in Game of Thrones? Hodor. And it was very, <laughs> yeah, well, Hodor doesn't really know any better, but none of them really have a nice life. No, none of them do. We thought maybe the Queen of Thorns was um, played by Diana Rigg. Well, the dragon's oh, have a fairly uh, easy time of it. Lady Tyrrell. Mm. Yeah. But pretty much everybody else is miserable. Some of the dragons are quite happy. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I think Bronze got a pretty good life. Yes. <laughs> he didn't expect to be nice, mm, did he? Yeah. <laughs> He's got a pretty good yeah, life. Yeah, Bronze does seem quite happy. And, yeah. and the squire lad. Oh, Padraig. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he seems to be having fun. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Everyone else is damn miserable. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Well, uh, okay, are we going to find out about the smoke baby thing this season? Well, I say the Stannis and Miscellendry things all changed in okay. the books. So, yes, there are. So, Revenge of the Smoke Baby might be on the cards. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brienne. Well, that's how she kills people. Isn't Brienne it? of Tarth mm. brought it up, didn't she? Brienne of Tarth brought it up when she was talking to Marjorie. Till. Yeah. yeah. So, Same. I imagine it's probably going to be a plot thing for this season. Because it's, yes. It's um, in the books he's married and she does magic and there's shadows that that kill, but he doesn't necessarily shagger and give birth to a smoke baby. That doesn't happen in the books. Well, how do they make the shadows? She just does it by magic. magic. <laughs> I don't think you actually need to copy. Where do smoke babies come from? <laughs> <laughs> under, the, under, the, under the cabbage <laughs> patch of fire. Well, son. <laughs> One daddy smoked once, and mummy smoked once. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen that episode of Lost. <laughs> cool. So yes, I don't know. That's but, one area I don't know about. Cool. Cool. Well, it was a strong. I thought it was a strong episode and good review on the Wonky Spider. Thank you very much. So yeah, uh, there will be more reviews and stuff going up there. There's there's one on there for Winter Soldier as well that we went to see last week. Which is so yeah. cool. Hopefully there'll be one for Divergent going up at some point this week when I finally got around to seeing it. Uh, and then yeah, we're we're going to be adding a, a load of new stuff on there. Yeah. Very very soon. I've added a a nice groovy event map to it today. So we've actually got a, a Google map thing with all the events plotted out on it now. And there are a fuck ton of them. There <laughs> needs to be more time. around Oxford. There do need to be more events around Oxford. Yeah. If you look at geographically, it's like it's all London or Glasgow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like the other extra, or Wales, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Birmingham. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, the, Birmingham yeah a couple of Birmingham. Closest, yeah. Okay, so events. We need, we've got a few that we really do need to plug, don't we? Yeah. So we have Lawgiver. Lawgiver, yes. So uh, Rule 32 are doing their first one-day convention, which yep. is a, a celebration of dread. That's at Eddie's Rock Bar. On the 5th of May. 5th of May, which is that Monday. That is the Monday, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's Easter, Easter, Easter Monday. Yeah. Bank holiday Monday. Yeah. Not Easter Monday. Right, Easter it's Bank holiday Monday. 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 May Bank holiday. May, yeah. yeah. It's Bank yeah. Uh, I mean, all, all the details. We'll put all the links to the events and everything in, in the show notes so you can see. Because I can't remember how much it is for it all, but who all's appearing at it. Got my head. Yeah, they got some pretty. They got some pretty big names in Dread, can they? So yeah. It should be pretty cool. If you're a fan, definitely go along. 2018 seems to be getting behind it as well, which is good. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I briefly met Pat Mills yeah. at the yeah. at the weekender as well because he was on after me on the main yeah. stage. So yeah, I bumped into him as we were swapping microphones and things backstage. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so yes, there's Lawgiver. Um, other events, we spoke briefly about the Alice on Mars launch at the Sci-Fi Weekender. They've got a fundraising evening coming up on the 10th of May. 10th of May, yep. Down in London. Yep, near uh, Liverpool Street Station. Yep, which uh, I believe they've got Andrew O'Neill playing, who we just went to see the other night in uh, in Reading doing his history of heavy metal. Lady Reagan. Lady Reagan will be playing, and yeah, a whole bunch of other people playing. 
comedians and musicians and stuff, and all proceeds are going towards uh, getting the film made. Cool. Which, if you've not seen the promo reel for, watch it. It's it's absolutely brilliant. It is truly, truly epic. I'm really looking forward to that film being made. It's going to be genius. I think the Kickstarter, is it? No, sorry, the Indiegogo, is already upwards around seven thousand pounds. I think at the moment we've got a target of twenty two. So. Okay, okay. Uh, there's still like 30 days to go on that, so it's, uh, it's looking like it's going well. Good. Which is cool, so I'll go and check that out as well. Uh, and then Latitude Punked yep. starts this Friday. I think you know more details about this than I do. It is an exhibition of eight different steampunk artists, which is at um, Greenwich Observatory. It's going to be running from uh, Friday till um, some point next year. All the exhibit got set up last week, um, which was pretty exhausting for everyone after the sci-fi weekend. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so we're thinking of popping down there on the tenth after we go to the Alice on Mars. Yep. So we'll be able to say a bit more about what's there and our reviews of it after that. Cool. So yeah, we'll, we'll feed back a bit about that after because we're we're going to the Alice on Mars fundraiser. We've already got tickets for that, so we're down to that on the 10th of May so anyone who's down at that we will see you there yeah I've got um, there's a link to a time out um, reference to it and there's also um, I have the website address for it as well so I'll put that in the show notes absolutely yeah so yeah we'll put details of all of these in the show notes any, any other events from you chaps no no give us a big one for me yeah I think no, those are the big ones yeah. so yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to attend Lawgiver. Are you going along? No, no, no okay. I'll, I'll make it away that weekend. So, yeah, ap yeah. apologies. We, we, Sorry. we won't be attending, but, you know, have our full support. It, yeah. Good luck with it, guys. I yeah. hope it goes well. Because we, we've had some fun at the Geek Meets up there. At Eddie, yeah. So, it's, uh, yeah, should be fun for fun, you all. It's a fun night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, which brings us on to uh, Brendan taking centre stage here. Oh, this is WrestleMania 30. Yeah, we, we, we've got to talk about it, sir. <laughs> so you stayed up to watch WrestleMania? Yeah, I stayed up to watch WrestleMania. I, I started drifting off to sleep by half past two, and just as the Undertaker's match was on. And I wasn't watching it, but I was awake and I was listening to it. I was my back turned, and I, and I heard the commentator saying, Brock Lesnar's got Taker up for his third F5. And then I heard the count, I heard the one, the two, the three. And I just shot round in bed like, what the fuck? Lesnar's broken the streak. Undertaker, before this WrestleMania, had won 21 matches at WrestleMania in a row. Taker's streak is the longest streak ever in wrestling. And it's, the streak. It's the streak. It's become a, a huge deal. It's almost as important as the title match, uh, to the extent that wrestlers who don't get a title match are often put into the match with Taker to, to challenge the streak. Um... And yeah, my first reaction was that of rage. You know, because I'm so like calm and collected when these things happen. <laughs> like, yeah. I never yeah. get, I never get just massively thrown out and upset. <laughs> about things no. Ever. no. Um, I understand that the Taker streak had to end at some point. Uh, I also understand that in the wrestling industry, when you go out. You go out on your back. You go out fighting, uh, and I do think at forty nine that Mark Calloway has probably called time on his career. And I think he would have been at Raw last night to actually say goodbye to the fans if he hadn't been in hospital with neck injuries and a concussion from the match with Brock Lesnar. Uh, and I also do recall that back at the start two thousands, two thousand and one. He did say then that he wanted Lesnar to be the one to break the streak. Mm. Um, I Why think, is that? I don't know. Because he offered the Mike, money. Lesnar was in WrestleMania <laughs> 20 as well, wasn't he? Yeah, well, Le and that was one of the most disappointing matches I've ever seen. Well, that was Lesnar versus Goldberg, Goldberg, and they were both they were both on their way out and yeah. couldn't care. So, it, it, in my opinion, I said my my two pennies worth is that Brock Lesnar has basically fucked WrestleMania 20 and WrestleMania 30. In my opinion, that's that's I think where a lot of fans are angry. They're not angry about the streak ending. They're angry with the person who ended yeah. the streak. Because when he left WWE to go to UFC, he said a lot of unkind things yeah. about wrestling. So he doesn't feel like he's one of us. Um, but 
the counter to that is, I don't think anybody else could have carried or, or had broad enough shoulders to deal with the abuse that comes with entering the street. Because if you have Daniel Bryan, who's a massive baby face at the moment, he's hugely over. If he'd ended the streak, would he have had the strength of character to deal with the inevitable fallout from breaking the streak? Lesnar doesn't need to have the audience love him. In fact, he works better with the audience hating him. Mm. I still, I'm still not 100% sure it was the right decision. And I would think, my personal preference would have been to have Kane end the streak. Have brother versus brother. They both want to retire. Have them go out in a like in a no contest, mm. you know. Mm. That would have been how I'd have built it, um, maybe for next year, or Icon versus Legend, Streak, uh, Sting versus Taker. But they can still have that match now. They can have the match at WrestleMania Thirty One, and it not be a foregone conclusion that Taker wins it. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, but as always, as with every year, the best thing about WrestleMania is the post WrestleMania Monday Night Raw, and last night's was no exception. We had two NXT superstars step up to the main roster in Alexander Rusev got his first match, destroyed Zack Ryder in what's essentially a squash match, but mm-hmm. he looks like a, a Samoan Joe. Okay. So he looks like a, a pretty agile big guy wrestler. And Paige stepped up from NXT as well to congratulate AJ Lee on defending her title. But AJ Lee sort of slaps and turns into a fight midway through. Paige wins on her debut, wins the title. Awesome. So, and to be fair, Paige is the only female wrestler I would have liked to see AJ got the title to, because she can wrestle. Cool. AJ, AJ Lee and Paige are probably the two best wrestlers in the industry at the moment, especially in, or in the WWE at the moment, maybe. Mm. So they will have a good feud that will be, able to be built around strong matches, um, which is where I think WWE needs to focus now. They've kind of built up the tag team division again last year or so, but they need to get rid of the Divas Championship. Mm-hmm. Need to get rid of the Divas thing, and call it the Women's Championship again. Yeah. Because in the last yeah. two years, we've had Trish Stratus and Lita, both inducted into the Hall of Fame. And if you watch Lita's uh, acceptance speech at this year's ceremony, she talks about how when she was a kid, she made the decision to go to Mexico. One way ticket. To learn the, to wrestle. To learn to wrestle mm-hmm. at the school Lucha Libre. And it was all about drive to do that. I don't know any. Divas in the current roster, apart from possibly AJ Lee, who famously broke down in tears when she was a child and met met Lita at a signing, um, who have that same sort of drive. Two others possibly would be Tamina Snooker and Natalia, but they're both second gen stars, so it's in their family blood already. Mm. The rest of them are all picked from model agencies. Yeah. Mm. They're all faces for, for a TV show. Well, Lita's at uh, Collector Mania this year, isn't she? And you do that, yeah. But her story, her acceptance speech was pretty pretty interesting, because I'd forgotten she was in ECW, mm. and you can't afford to be a wallflower in ECW. God, You've no. got to get out there and actually fight. Mm. Um, and she tells us about how she broke her neck in a match, mm. and how like the doctors were telling her all these things. But the one person she wanted to speak to was Stone Cold Steve Austin, <laughs> and how Stone Cold Steve Austin helped her get back back in the ring and back to back to wrestling again but yeah I think with Paige who is a uh, 23 year old lass from Norwich she's got wrestling in the family as well and she's a fantastic fighter if you watch any the NXT stuff she's has some really good matches with stars who are now coming through so I think that division is going to get stronger over the next couple of years because to be honest it's been a joke uh, yeah, well, so it has been long. for a long time yeah. since Trish Stratus and, and then left, yeah. like again, 10 years ago. Because at that point, there were a couple of good women wrestlers. Yeah, it was Mickey James, she was pretty yeah. still. Uh, but then it was again a lot of window dressing, mm-hmm. and that was it. Because uh, do you remember we watched a couple of them and we were like, there's a couple there who can actually wrestle, but the rest of them is just pointless. Okay, yeah. yeah, it's, it's tedious. Stacey Keebler's of the world. Yeah. Wrestling in bikinis. Yeah, yeah and, and dance competitions. Yeah. 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 But it was good to have that on Raw, because the Divas... It was, it was actually ironic that the Divas match at WrestleMania was actually quite good. They all got their spots, they all seemed to do a bit of wrestling, but it came on straight after the Take a, take a Streak had been broken. Right. And so the crowd were chanting, no one cares, no yeah. one cares. Yeah. Um, 
but AJ Lee defended it. Uh, the crowd got their big moment after months and months and months of being screwed over. Daniel Bryan won the title. Mm. So he beats Triple H in the opening match of the ceremony, gets uh, absolutely destroyed by Triple H post match uh, as revenge, and then comes back and beats Batista and Randy Orton in <laughs> Triple Threat match at the end. Nice. To win it. I was disappointed that John Cena won. Not that I don't like John Cena, but he doesn't need a victory at WrestleMania. No. He's got so many victories in the bank, he can afford to take a loss and put over a star. And Bray Wyatt is phenomenal as a wrestler and also on the microphone. In terms of, if you think about all the skills you need to be a wrestler, Mike's skills is one of the top ones. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Wrestling That's why the Miz is awesome, because his mic skills are second to none. Yeah. Uh, WrestleMania started with Hogan, Stone Cold and The Rock in the ring. And after looking at those three, you think, there is no one on the current roster who has that sort of star, star mm. power, but there are a few who are close. Yeah. CM Punk, before he quit, was one of the best talkers on the microphone. Yeah. And Bray Wyatt believes his character so much, he is brilliant. And he is just a, 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 a cult leader, essentially. But he's great, and he could have done with the, with the win. And it would have been good to see Cena put him over. Because if Chris Jericho can put over Fandango, in Fandango's debut match at WrestleMania 29, Cena can put over Bray Wyatt. Yeah, absolutely. But he didn't. There's some sort of uh, rumour about Hogan coming back. He's it? back. He's he is back. He was, yeah. he was the host of WrestleMania. Mm. Oh, right. So I, think, I think there's, there's rumours of him taking up the general manager role for Raw. Mm. Um, He's in no condition to get back in the ring. Oh, though. God, no. no. God, no. It hasn't been. <laughs> it's been <laughs> long, long, long. No, it's been <laughs> But it was, it, was, it was great to see WrestleMania. That it actually felt like a much better WrestleMania than 29, um, apart from Taker losing the streak. Mm. But I can understand that all good things come to an end. I can understand why they did it, but again, Brock Lesnar, no. He was, he was not the one who should have done it. No. And I, say, I, I will stand by my opinion that he's ruined two of the, the big WrestleManias for me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's about it. And that was like surprisingly calm. It and, was like lucid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm growing. See how I'm growing? <laughs> See how I'm developing as a person? See how I'm calming down? It's the therapy of podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay, well, I guess that's about us for the week, isn't it? It really is, isn't it? Cool, okay. Yeah. Uh, so I guess we need to just intro the outro track, <laughs> as it were. Intro is, the outro. What is the track? Uh, well, I'm going to actually let Emma do this one, because you technically found them. Oh, tripod. Tripod. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you could do it. You sure? Okay, well, basically, we're, we're, we were at home uh, just cooking dinner one day, and I had my Spotify on random radio play based on my list and then I just heard Emma shout in from the kitchen you got to come and listen to this song please come and listen to this song please come uh, and the lyrics of it being there's, there's a hot girl in the comic store so uh, yeah I listened to it and it's, it's hilarious it's a great tune so the track is Hot Girl the track is called Hot Girl the band are called Tripod they're yeah. from Australia they're uh, a trio of musicians who do comedy tracks uh, and yeah, they're great. They, they've got at least six or seven albums out now. And yeah, I got in touch with the guys and went, you know, can we, can use, we use this hot girl on the podcast? And I was like, yes, please, we want you to do do it. So yeah, yeah. so here it is for you. After uh, we do our outro, it'll be uh, Hot Girl by Tripod. Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks everyone for listening. That's all for this episode. I've been Brendan. I've been Spindles. And I've been Aidy. And I've been Emma. Until next time, take care and be excellent to each other. There was a hot girl in the comic shop and I didn't know what to do. There was a hot girl in the comic shop, she was looking at the Doctor Who. There was an actual girl in the comic shop, what am I meant to stay? To check to make sure that she wasn't just a human sized cardboard display. My competition was a kid with pimples and a guy in a wheelchair. So I knew I had to act fast. There was a hot girl in the comic shop where 
I never seen a girl before A kind of indie looking girl in the comic shop And she knew her way around the store She come to the comic shop looking for love. I guess I. 